Hello, welcome to The Biblical Perspective, an in-depth expositional study in the Word of God. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to this presentation of the Biblical Perspective Bible Study. Tonight, we're going to be talking about encouragement regarding your future. I'm Kevin Dunnigan, and this is my lovely wife, Yvonne Dunnigan, also known as Teacher Dunnigan. Uh, she's going to be joining me with this presentation tonight. Let's just jump into it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to get started. Our current teaching series is entitled Encouragement from the Scriptures. As we discuss various topics, we will see that the Bible has encouragement for all of all the areas and experiences we encounter in life. Instead of looking into the fields of psychology or human philosophy, believers should look in the Word of God for encouragement. Let us now consider the content of the text that we have chosen for the theme scripture for these studies. Romans 15, 4 tells us, for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through the perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. <laughs> you know, this verse, tells us that the purpose of the Bible is given by God for our instruction as how to live. It teaches us to endure, which leads to encouragement and provides hope for the future. Now, when I was doing this study uh, and I read the scripture and I read the words of Pastor Fred, uh, immediately came to mind, of course, my, my athletic analogy. And so when I saw the words as far as instruction, endure, encouragement, and hope, it took me to a boxer. Oh. And, you know, we all know what a boxer goes through as far as in preparation, what he goes through in the ring. But I had broken it down in the context that um, instruction is the boxer's training academy. It's, a, it's their training camp, I should say. So, you know, they, they go through Bible study, mm -hmm. Sunday sermon, fellowship, devotions. That's the Christian boxer's training, you know, training camp. Yeah. Then... Once you've done all that, you have to endure. That's fight night. That's life. <laughs> so in fight night, you deal with life's trials and tribulations. And during these trials and tribulations, just as in a fight, there's breaks in the action. End of round one, end of round two. Yeah. You go to your corner. And that's where the encouragement is, because the corner usually has three people. They're called corner men or corner women. Yeah. It's you know, the cut man, the trainer, the manager. And I correlated that to God, mm -hmm. the Son, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, when you're in the corner, you, you're getting words of encouragement, words what to do, what not to do. That's the Holy Spirit talking to your heart. You have God right next to you in your corner, so you know that you know, he, he hasn't left you. Mm -hmm. And you've got Jesus Christ there to remind you, hey, we already got the victory. So then when it gets to the hope, the hope for the future, I should say, you get back in the ring and you fight the good fight because you're gonna fight it until the victory is in hand. Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> Can I give a little sure. bit more clarity on, as, Pastor, as you were saying, you know, Pastor Fred writing this, uh, the purposes of the scripture, as the Bible tells us, was written for our learning. That's in another variation of the Bible. While they were not directly written to us, it still contains invaluable lessons for us. So we are encouraged, we can be encouraged through problems, through conflict, through tribulations, and through trouble. The Bible teaches us, the scripture teaches us to be committed, to stay right. committed. You told that boxer, hey, you got to get back in the round. Get in the ring. You got to get in the ring. Yeah. You, got, you got a couple of more rounds to go through to fight, but you keep doing it. And through the scriptures, the scriptures keeps telling us and keeps encouraging us over and over and over again that we can find those, that comfort in the scriptures yes. all the time. 
Thank you. And now, as we explore encouragement for the future, we will see the greatness of God's plans for us, the daily provision of God's faithfulness to us, what God will accomplish in us, and the superiority of God's plan over our plans, God's guidance going forward, mm -hmm. and our ultimate destination and reward. So let's get on with this presentation. A future of God's prosperity. Prosperity During the captivity of the Israelites in Babylon, God inspired the prophet Jeremiah to write them and give them words of encouragement. They were told to remain faithful to God mm -hmm. and their families and to pray for their place of residence. The prophet informed, that, informed them that their time of deliverance had been set by God and that he had determined to give them lives of prosperity and hope. This is supported in the scripture Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. That's one of my favorite mm -hmm. scriptures. I am always reminded about God's plan. Right. Meaning he had forethought, he thought about me, he thought about you, and he, uh, he had a future, a good future. Yes. Not just a future, but a good future planned out for us. So we're going to talk about a future of God's faithfulness. Just as was the case with the nation of Israel, God's people today, us, will encounter times and places of loss, of discouragement, of sadness, and of loneliness. In the book of Lamentations, the prophet Jeremiah encourages believers by reminding us of the unending love and faithfulness that God, that provide, uh, of God that provides security. We're always looking for security. For those who belong to him, we awake each day and receive new mercies and compassions from God. Listen to Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Also, it talks about a future of divine accomplishment. In his letter to the church of Philippi, the apostle Paul expresses the joy and appreciation he felt regarding the believers there. He mentioned their faithful service in Christian ministry and then encourage them regarding his confidence in the fact that God would cause them to have divine accomplishments. He had planned for them. In Philippians 1.6, it says, Being confident of this, that he who has begun a good work in you will carry it out on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Do you mind if I can continue? Yes. A future, of God's, uh, a future of God's purpose. All believers were saved by God who wants them to serve him and perform the work he had planned for them to do before they were saved. Mm -hmm. In light of this truth, we believers should pray for guidance and seek the will of God for our lives so that to carry out God's purpose for us. When our plans don't work out the way we thought they would, we should consider that maybe God has purposed something better for us. We need to be encouraged and accepting of our life when God's purpose interrupts our plans. Amen. That statement is supported by Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, which states, We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do so. Let me take a moment. Let me, looking at the, the definition and the synonyms of handiwork, when you read that scripture, you can also say we are God's creation. We are God's design. We are God's invention. Mm. We are God's handicraft. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works for which God prepared in advance for us to do. If that doesn't put an S on your chest, I don't know what will. <laughs> <laughs> also, Proverbs uh, 19, 20, verse uh, 19, 21 says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Mm -hmm. I truly believe this scripture is directly related to this, the saying that man has, when, when man makes plans, God laughs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or you can plan a, a pretty picnic 
but you can't predict the weather. <laughs> a future of God's guidance. In order for God to direct our lives in the way that we should go, we must acknowledge the need for his guidance and then ask him for it in prayer. Mm -hmm. We were saved by placing our trust in God, so we should live each day by placing trust in him. It is very, very encouraging to know that he is showing us where to go, the accurate path, yes. and what to do, the proper behavior. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Now, there's a scripture that's found in, in the Old Testament that says, you know, that the Lord is a light unto my pathway. Mm -hmm. And I know every morning I pray, Lord, order my steps. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes it's not just the steps that we take. God will straighten the road that we're on. Mm. Yeah. But we still have to trust in him to walk that road. Yeah. So let's look at a future with living hope. It is true and encouraging to know that God has planned a future for us with prosperity and hope. It is true and encouraging that God has unending love for us that causes him to grant us new mercy every day. It is true and encouraging that God uses us, I'm sorry, to do ministry. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it is true and encouraging that God planned ministry for us. We were saved and that his purpose will prevail. It is true and encouraging that God will guide us on the right path. It is true and encouraging that God has given us the promise of eternal heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and praise his wonderful name. No. Let's read 1 Peter 1, 3 through 4 that says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy, has caused us to be born again. I remember when I first heard that word, born again. Man. I was running around that high school like I was somebody. <laughs> that was really something. You was running and I was chasing. You, oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will never fade away, reserved in heaven for you and for me. Wow. You no, know, we I've heard you mention uh, twice during this lesson about the new mercies every day. Yeah. And, you know, every time I, I hear that and I, I read that, it reminds me of uh, an analogy that one of my mentors at Biola used to always tell us that, you know, when we're on this road of life, mm -hmm. you know, we're not supposed to stare in the rearview mirror. We're supposed to stare out the windshield and that what happened yesterday is covered by today's mercies. So, you know, keep your focus on the, the, the windshield, not the rear view. You know, Satan wants you to stare at the, the rear view and, yes. and wallow in stuff that you've done, but God has already, you know, he's, he's forgiven you for that, and his, the blood of Jesus has covered that. So stay focused in, as we continue, and as you continue on your path that God has you, and don't worry about the rear view. Learn from the rear view, yeah. but don't wallow in the rear view. Yeah. Focus on the windshield. And the beautiful thing about that I hear you telling, saying is don't look back. And then we have a future that we can look forward to. People are always planning for the future, right. hoping for the future, but God says it's right here. So looking in the scriptures tells us what kind of future we can have. Mm -hmm. And so definitely believers should very much so have hope yes. and hope in God. In summation, in light of who we are in Jesus Christ and in light of what God has promised regarding our life here on earth and our future in heaven, we should remain encouraged in all circumstances. God has promised to never abandon us mm -hmm. and his goodness and his mercy follow us throughout our lives. Amen. Amen. This statement is supported in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, where it says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because, because God has said, 
I will never leave you, never will I forsake you. Now, before I continue on with the next supporting scripture, um, this, according to theologians and archeologists and yeah. those that, that study you know, the, the, the historicity of certain artifacts, um, the Catholic Encyclopedia says that the probable date for the composition of the book of Hebrew is possibly the second half of the year of 63 or beginning of 64. But most Christian scholars hold to a later date of its composition between 70 and 100 AD. The reason why I say that is that this was written way back then. Mm -hmm. But even today, we still have a pursuit of money. The world has a, a pursuit of money. Society and media puts it forward to us that you know, we have to get as much money as we can. Yeah. And not to trust in God, not to lean on God, um, not to trust in the promises of God. So when people say, oh, that's just an old book, we're, we're the same people as when this was written you know, in that old book. So <laughs> ain't nothing changed. <laughs> Also supporting the statement that I had said previously is in Psalm chapter 23, verse 6, where it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah. Goodness and mercy. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't mind that following me wherever I go. Mm. <laughs> no, I don't either. Do you have any closing remarks? I do have one remark. Um, you and I should have a positive expectation about our hope and our future. Jesus' resurrection guarantees that to, and now that we have our own. So when you find yourself discouraged, break out in a sudden praise, <laughs> just like Peter did when he was reminded what Jesus did for us. Amen. In closing, I shall add, you know, we, at the start of this, it was encouragement for the future. And we used, uh, our theme for this was Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Yeah. Um, the world seems to have encouragement for its futures in the stock market, mm. in cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, in what this entertainer does, what that entertainer is, is wearing, everything but what they are truly made of, which is from a spiritual perspective, yeah. which you get your guidance from the scriptures. So for those of you that have been you know, blessed by what we've said, um, we're honored to be able to, uh, yeah. to expose these words. But remember, if you want answers to, for encouragement, if you want answers for the future, all you have to do is look in the, the scripture and trust in God's word and his Holy Spirit to, to guide you through. With that being said, thank you once again for joining us for the Biblical Perspective. And until the next time, be blessed. Emmanuel Community Church is located at 12607 Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Hawthorne, California. You can find all of our messages on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click subscribe and thanks for watching. Be blessed for God is with us.